It is April the 18th, 2011, and this is my first video tutorial. So I became interested in doing video tutorials because I made a few postings on my own website about programming audio in C Sharp and uh, doing some fancy things with direct show streams. And I got a few questions back, so I thought, well, why not make some tutorials? And video tutorials seem like a great idea, so here I am diving into my first tutorial. So this is my website, giawa.com. The entire tutorial, as well as the solution, an example WAV file, everything like that will be available in this tutorial section. You can see there's just a test video up here for now, but I will get to it by the time you see this. I'll be up there. So, right. I'm really interested in doing audio and video coding, not only because it's my job to do that, but also because audio and video give you great feedback that we as humans can understand very quickly. Doing things like numerical analysis, uh, taking partial differential equations and uh, solving them, those are all great things that computers can do and there's a lot of smart people that are great at doing it, but audio and video are things that we can deal with naturally. We have eyes, we have ears, we're meant to do this kind of stuff and it's great to get that feedback and see what your code is doing so quickly. So that's one of the reasons I really like looking into audio and video software and that's why I've chosen as my career path. So I hope I can get you excited about audio and video programming as well. So we're going to dive right into it. I use the Microsoft Visual C Sharp uh, code or programming language. Jeez. I should really script these things, but whatever. So <laughs> in C Sharp, there's not a lot of help for doing audio playback. You can use the Windows Media Player COM interop, but that's kind of a pain. So there's a great guy named Mark who's created this n-audio library. It's at n-audio.coplex.com. I hope he doesn't mind me tossing this out there. But it's an open source project. It's a great Visual C Sharp class library for doing audio. So we're going to go ahead and download this. Yes, I read all that. I agree. And what we're interested in getting are the binaries inside of here. You can take a look at the source code if you're interested to see how it all works, but I'm going to grab this binary and put it in my tutorials folder here, which is where I'll make my project. So with that said, I'll open up Visual Studio and create a new project. And the first thing I'd like to do is to read a WAV file in and play it. So this is my first tutorial, and the goal of this tutorial is to just play some sort of audio using C Sharp. So I'm just going to create some really basic functionality here. Open a WAV file. I'm going to make another button, which is going to play, or let's say pause, or play the WAV. I'll give this a nice name, because I have some great stuff in store for this button. It's going to be disabled by default, and then when we open the WAV file, it will enable that button, allowing you to pause. Now really, that's all we need right there. I'll give this a great name. First tutorial. First tutorial. And we're ready to dive right into the code here. So, for those of you who don't know what a WAV file is, a WAV file is a computer's sort of representation of uncompressed audio. So, a computer stores audio as a bunch of samples. You can imagine that the audio is this nice wave that's moving through the air, and this is where your ear hears and turns into the sensation that we describe as music or speech. Now, a computer doesn't really understand how to represent an analog waveform like this. So what it does is it samples the analog waveform very, very quickly using a transducer like a microphone or something like that. So you can see these samples coming at regular intervals. The computer looks and says, the audio is at this point here at this time. And then at the next slot of time, at its sampling interval, it'll be at this point. So the computer uses this representation to reproduce the audio. As long as it samples the audio quickly enough, it can faithfully reproduce this. So our ears hear up to about 20 kilohertz, which would be a sinusoid going 20,000 times per second. So a computer normally samples at around 44.1 kilohertz, which works out perfectly for reproducing up to 22 kilohertz in the audio band. So the computers do a pretty good job of reproducing what we hear. So a WAV file is a container that stores all of that information. And we're just going to go ahead and open one up. So let's create an open file dialog. And I'm going to put a nice filter on here so that they can only select WAV files. Let me get this syntax right. So 
So we're going to go ahead and ask the user to provide us with some sort of WAV file. Now before we progress any further, we're going to have to add an audio to our project. So we're going to go to references, and I'll browse to where I put that nAudio.dll, which will give us all the functionality that's in that class library. Now we'll need two things. We'll need a source, which will be our WAV file, and we'll need a sync, which is where that data is going to. In this case, we want it to go to our speakers. So we're going to use something called a direct sound out, which will use the default direct sound object that's on your computer. So let's start by getting the source. So for that, we'll use the nAudio WAV file reader, which has all the methods to read in a WAV file, process its header information, everything like that. And then the sync is this direct sound out. Now let's go ahead and open that WAV file. You can see the constructor takes a string, which is the location of that WAV file, so we'll just pass it the file name. And we'll create our direct sound output. The default constructor is fine. Now you can see that we need to initialize our direct sound output, and it takes this I wave provider. Now, a WAV file reader is a WAV stream, but not an iWave provider, so we'll need to use an intermediary object called WAV channel 32, which will perform that conversion. So here we go, nAudio.wave, WAV channel 32, and that will take our WAV. Now we're ready to go. Let's call the play method, and we'll just enable our pause button. So really that's all we need to do to play the WAV file. Let's implement our play and pause. We'll only do this if we have a direct sound output running. And if it's playback state, is currently playing, we'll want to pause it. And if our playback state is currently paused, we'll want to play it. Now the final thing to do is to dispose of all of our resources when the form closes. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go and find my form closing method. And I'm going to create a method called dispose wave. If output is not null, if output's playback state is playing, I'm going to stop it first. And then I'll call its dispose method and set it to null. And I'll do the same thing for the wave. Sorry. And now when our form is closing, we can call dispose wave. Now the reason I put this in its own method is because you might want to call that elsewhere. For example, you might want to call this method when you're opening a wave file so that you dispose of the previous wave file properly. So let's do that and put it up here in our load wave file method. So now that's all the code we need. Let's compile this, run it. Look at that, we've got our first tutorial. We'll open a wave file. And I happen to have a wave file sitting here in my tutorials directly directory. I will upload a wave file to my website as I mentioned before. It will be here in the tutorial section along with the video that you're watching now and all the source code. So let's play it. Very good, our pause functionality works fine. Now if we hit it again, it should resume where it left off. Oh, C sharp, I'm never gonna give you up. So, that was terrible. Now there we go, with a few short lines of code, we're using the nAudio library to load our WAV file in. Play it, pause it, and everything seems to work great. So I hope you enjoyed this first tutorial. The next tutorial will do something a bit more useful. We'll load an MP3 file in. Everyone loves to listen to MP3, so that'll be super useful, and we'll progress from there. Have an awesome day, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.